excited. <laughs> if you stand with me. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Sunday that you've given us. God, as we enter this day and we have so much going on, emotions all over the place, mine are anyways, I ask, God, that you would just bring your peace. God, I ask that you bring your love, your grace, and your mercy this morning into this place. God, that you touch each and every one of our hearts and our lives. God, that you would just allow us to know that we've met with Almighty God. And this morning, may you find our praise and our worship honoring. God, with everything we do, may we honor you, may we worship you. And for those that can't be here this morning, God, we ask that you would be with them. We ask that you would encourage them, that you would lift them up, that you would build them up, that you would speak into their hearts and to their lives, whatever it is that is causing them to not be here. And Lord, we pray for everyone here, God, that you would just allow us to focus in on you, and God, that we would be challenged by your word, challenged by our worship, and that we would leave this place different. And at this time, God, we also want to pray the prayer that you taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
47.
moment of grace. This is the hour of blessing. Today is the day of salvation. Here is the path to new life. Already joy is abounding and love is flowing. For this is the day God is making. Let us Let rejoice and sing. You may be seated. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, to honor, to worship you. And God, just to come before your throne of grace with boldness and to make many petitions of you this morning. God, I ask for your, your grace and your mercy. We pray for the unspoken requests. And God, we ask that whatever those are, whatever the needs are, whatever that these people are asking, the situations, that you would reach down and that you would do exceedingly and abundantly for them. God, that you would do what they don't even know it's possible for you to do, that you'd show yourself real to them in a very new way. God, we pray for uh, Alicia and I as we take off, but we pray more for Pastor Joe and his wife Debbie. God, as they come in, we ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, a fresh anointing on them. We ask, God, that amazing things would happen in this building and in this property and this community, that Saugus would be turned upside down because of Cliftondale Congregational Church. God, we ask that you just give them a fresh start in everything they do, and may it just be amazing here. We pray for all the graduates, Lord, everyone that's just graduated high school, college, different things going on, and we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with them. God, as they step into the next phases of their life, whatever it may be, whether it's high school to college, high school to jobs, or college to jobs, or not sure, whatever is going on, we ask that you would guide them, that you would direct them, and that you would show them your truth. And then finally, Lord, we pray for the remainder of this service. God, we pray for your Holy Spirit's presence to be here, that you would just do amazing things, and that you would challenge our hearts and lives. And God, that we would leave this place different. This would be a day we look back upon as where there's just change for each and every one of us. Positive, good change. And ultimately, we would be more like you. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
the spirit of the dove came and rested on Jesus' shoulder, and God spoke, and he said, This is my son. I love you, and I am well pleased with you. And again, this reminds me of today, because I think God is saying those words to Josh right now. As I think we all should, because Josh has done such a great job. It has been such a blessing to us. But we need to remember, I do in this moment, we need to remember what the first sign from God was. And that sign was the sign of peace. That God sent the dove to give us peace. And in times of change, we need to be filled with, that, <coughs> with God's peace. And with just saying that Josh has been preaching to us over the past two weeks, to be praying, to be praying all the time. I have been praying for Josh as he and Alicia as they're moving from here, and for Joe as he's preparing to come. And I encourage you all to do the same in this next week too. And, and to have that peace and to, as Josh said, to believe in our prayer that Pastor Joe will do great things for our church through Christ and the Holy Spirit. And with that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful time we've had <clears throat> with Josh and Alicia. I thank you, Lord, for all that they have done for us. I thank you for um, just their spirit, for their teachings, for the change that they have made here. And Lord God, I just pray that you would watch over them, bless them abundantly with your peace first, with health. Bless them, Lord, in all of their needs and all that they do in their continued ministry. And Lord God, as we pray now, please prepare Joe and his wife Debbie as they come to share your love, joy, peace, and word with us. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Oh.
opportunity to give back to you with all the many gifts that you've given us. We ask that you take each of our gifts this morning to be the needs of this church and go above and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. <coughs> Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Christ Jesus raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Jesus Christ with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hermenius and Philetus, who have disparted from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription, The Lord knows those who are His, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also wood and clay. Some are for special purposes, and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Do not have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you, will, you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. This morning, though, I, I you know, it's, it's interesting coming in and, and, and having such mixed emotions, right? There's all kinds of good things. I, I think I said it a few weeks ago, the, the best part of this whole situation is that I leave with zero regrets. I'm excited for you guys. I'm stoked. Um, so I thought about what, what could you say? What can you honestly say? How do you speak on your last sermon? Like what, what, what can you honestly say? What have people not already heard, hopefully? And as I was going through different things and I was actually studying, I've actually had this sermon written for almost six weeks. Because I, I felt like God gave me the answer as I was doing some personal study and I was looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. This morning, if you looked at what we just read and you paid attention to it at all, Paul was admonishing Timothy in making a personal appeal to him. So I, I titled this morning, it should say our, but it does say my personal appeal to you, Cliftondale. So 
So I'm going to steal a sermon from Paul, one of the greatest sermon writers that we ever had, and just pull out a few different things for you. And then, um, and then at the end of the sermon, uh, Alicia and I are going to read a letter to you from us. And then we're going to do something a little bit different that we've only done on, I think, Monday, Thursdays. And we're going to stand here in our last time serve communion together. So I thought that would be nice and be honoring to you guys. But before we get there, let's, let's look at some of these scriptures. So the first seven scriptures, actually, it's... Paul warning Timothy of the difficulties of life, right? Life is not simple. There's a lot of things happening. So we'll just, we'll look at these a little bit and, and go through. But the very first verse, Paul says to Timothy, you, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Right? What's he doing? The first thing he's saying, look, stop for a moment before you try and figure everything out. Realize it's not you. Right, so as you guys are going to be making steps forward, right, you've got this new pastor coming in, you've got all kinds of good things happening, and the first thing is, yes, you've got to make plans, we talked about that a little bit ago, about having vision, and we'll get to that later on in this chapter, but also you've got to stop, say, all right, God, the leader, our king, our Christ, our savior, first let's acknowledge him, what do you have for us? God, how do I keep you first? And then you've got to go to the verse 2. And the things that you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who also be able to qualify to teach others. Right? So what are some of the things that we've done here over the last couple of years, two years? We've really tried to stay very biblical focused. We started Alpha. Right? What was the purpose of Alpha? To raise up and train other people to share Jesus. Right? So my next appeal to you is you got to keep it going. Now, it doesn't have to always be alpha, right? Maybe there'll be some other options. But at this point, you've got to take that step and say, all right, this worked pretty well. Now how do we go on to the next step? How do we bring this to others? You know, Paul's telling this to Timothy. You think about, oh, yeah, well, Timothy was the minister. You know, he should be getting all this. But what about you guys? Right? We talked a lot about this over the last few years. And just your involvement, your part. And it's not just the pastor up there preaching. It's not just... The deacons do their things, the trustees do their things, and the rest of us come and go on Sunday or whatever. No, we all have an integral part. We all have a part that we need to do, and we need to also remember, what does the Word of God say? What have we been taught? What does Scripture say? How do we play that out into our community? See, sometimes it can be easy to remember, you know, the good Scriptures, right? The ones where all the promises, right? We have 365 promises. Those, all those ones are easy. Sometimes it's harder to remember the ones that say do something. Right? <clears throat> what did Jesus say? He says, don't just be hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word. Make sure that you hold on to the word. Make sure that you produce that and teach others so that they can go on and do the same thing. Paul, Paul goes on to admonish him too and say, you know, don't, don't try and get caught up in all kinds of different craziness, right? Don't get caught up in arguments. We had a conversation recently. My, my sister was telling Alicia how when I was younger, I was like the first in theological argument. And I was going to prove the entire world wrong and how I was smarter than everyone. And now... I really could care less. What matters more to me is, do you know Jesus? And if you do, okay, fine, perfect. You may worship him differently. Some people like it different styles, right? That's why Click Dip Call Creation exists. Because you guys like this style. Someone down the street, I mean, we've heard, I mean, the Haitians, if it's quiet enough, you can hear them from here. It's amazing. But maybe that's not your style, right? But what matters is, do they believe in Jesus? Do we believe in Jesus? How do we push that? And do we really need to fight and argue over, as Paul told Timothy, stupid things? You know, it's good to, to be theologically sound and it's good to know the truth. But sometimes I think we get caught up in things that really don't matter. Paul, in verse 3, he goes on and he says to him, Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. This one's really easy to skip over. Uh, I don't think I want to suffer. 
yesterday for my brother's uh, bachelor party, we went frisbee golf. I've never done frisbee golf before. We had to rent our frisbees. The person we rented the frisbees from said, do not play hole three. There's water up the entire right side. Don't play hole three. And by the way, you're giving us an extra $5 because we think you'll probably play hole three and lose a frisbee. <laughs> we did not play hole three. But you know what's on the other side of hole three that they didn't tell us about? Hole 11. <laughs> so what do you think happened? A frisbee went in the water. The lady told us, if you go in the water, we're going to prosecute all this stuff, right? So here we got nine guys, one engineer, very intelligent guy. What do you think we did? Nobody went in the water, but we got that frisbee. We weren't losing our five bucks. We actually found another Frisbee, so we got an extra five bucks when we went back. <laughs> Here's what we did. We found a couple of big sticks, threw them past the Frisbee so it would make a wake. The Frisbee floated in and we didn't go into the water. But who wants to think about this one, right? Most of the time we want to skip all three. Now it's, I told you I wrote this six weeks ago. Verse 3, I can't make up this stuff. But you can't skip. Paul says, come and suffer as a good soldier. What's he saying? He's saying, hey, get focused. How many know when you're focused, you can suffer a little bit, right? You can miss out on some things. You've got to say no to some things. You've got to do some other things. I have a friend right now that <clears throat> he's been so busy trying to pass his CFA, he literally has no time for anyone or anything. Suffering. I wouldn't go suffer for that right now, but I would suffer for Jesus, right? Paul says, endure hardness as a good soldier for Jesus. If you're going through, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have bumps. You're going to have hiccups. If you start with this new pastor, right? Endure it. Stick it out. Make it work. If you did it, something's wrong. Right? Anytime you stick a group of people together, if they all get along 100% of the time, they're all fake. It's not possible. Right? I mean, come on. Endure it. Stick it out. Verse 4. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs but rather tries to please his commanding officer. What a powerful verse. Here's my appeal on this one. You represent Jesus, right? Did you claim by being a Christian, you're Christ-like, you're representing Jesus? Remember the thing I told you before? A local pastor caught doesn't look good. Let's take it home. Local Cliftondale member caught. I'm saying, hey, don't, don't get entangled with other things. Don't bring a bad name to Jesus. Don't bring a bad name to Cliftondale. You know, it's easy. You ever been caught somewhere you're not supposed to? No? Wow, you guys are all good people. <laughs> That's nice. I've been caught a lot of times where I wasn't supposed to. The first thing that happens, right? What do you do? Oh. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I, 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 was, uh, I, I was holding this for a friend. Are you not holding anything, Josh? Uh, I, I don't know. I just I got lost. Really? Don't even be in this situation, is what Paul's saying. Right? Just don't even, don't even end up with it. Don't make it so you have to explain it. If you don't want people on Facebook to see it, maybe you don't do it. Just a thought, a little rule of thumb. We'll keep moving, though. Verse 6. 
The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. This one goes right as in the previous verse. If you're really pushing for something, you should live it. If you're selling something, you should eat it. You know what I tell people when it comes to financial advising? I don't sell. Everything I tell people to do, I personally do. There's no sale. This makes sense. This is what you should do. I've had people ask me, can you show me your personal portfolio? Sure. <coughs> I have nothing to hide. Everything I'm telling you to do, I do. Right? What's the age-old parent saying? Do as I say, not as I do. I hate it. I used to think, I can't wait to be a dad and just do what I want. <laughs> I can wait right now. <laughs> Verse 7. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. What's Paul saying? Listen. Go back and look at this. Every once in a while, pick up your Bible, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and just read through it. Reflect on it. Think about it. Does this accurately show my life? Or is this just something that I think is nice and pretty? Does this really work, or is it my fault? Over the next two verses, 8 through 10, I guess three verses, Paul gives examples of how to endure. Right? Verses 8 through 10. Remember Jesus Christ. Boy, what a tough one. Anybody want to go to a cross? Yeah. Not me. You know, in the Philippines, it's an honor. I don't know why and how. And they keep an ambulance there beside you. And once a year, they actually will put somebody on a cross. God is not calling you to do that. That is not okay. I don't condone it. But should we be more like Jesus? Right? He was raised from the dead. He's descended from David. This is his gospel. It's, he's the reason that we, we suffer, right? He's the point of being chained like a criminal. Paul's talking about how you know, we don't deal with this in this country, the, the persecution. But Paul's like, listen, this is worth it. Being chained and being in prison really isn't that bad, considering he died on the cross for me. Right? When you look at these things and you say, okay, endure hardness like Jesus. Look, look, what's the worst that happens to us? You get made fun of. There goes that Bible thumper. The holy roller. Now you guys have to worry about that. <laughs> Ask me later what that is. Verse 10. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that to may so that they may too obtain the salvation of Christ Jesus. Paul's saying, hey, you know, it's worth it. If one person comes to Jesus because of my life, then it's worth it. If Cliftondale Congregation leads people to Jesus, whatever you go through is worth it. Right? Hands down, it's, it's worth it. And that's where Paul, in verses 11 through 13, he really gives us some strong stuff, right? is a trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. This is, this is something that Paul's quoting that Jesus said. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot disown himself. Right? So we can have all kinds of things go wrong, but the one thing he just never disown him. Always say, you know what, Jesus, you're number one. No matter what, I'll follow you. No matter how embarrassing this might be, no matter how difficult it might be, I don't want to deny him. If I deny him, then he'll deny me. A couple other scriptures to look at. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with, and that we also would be glorified. All of the Romans, he's saying the same thing. Hey, look, it's really going to be that bad if people make fun of you. Is it really that difficult if you have to be called names? But 
you get to be glorified in Christ. Right? It's not all that bad. In fact, it's pretty good. Because what happens? Matthew 25, 21. This is the part that's the most important. When all is said and done, when individually we stand before God, what do we want to hear? And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over at many things. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. What's better than that, right? Things may be a little bit difficult here on earth. We might have some ups, some downs. But what's the ultimate goal? Let's keep that in mind. Ultimately, where we want to end up is where we stand before God and he says, well done. You're a good and faithful servant. You know, this morning, our, our appeal to you is this. Live like you believe Jesus is real. Act like you believe Jesus is real. Love like you believe he's real. As a church, walk. Talk, act, that he's the son of God. Paul made this appeal to Timothy, and no, we didn't get through the whole chapter, but go back and read it. Go back and look at it. Think it through. My challenge to you is over the next week, break it up into a few different scriptures each day, and just read just a couple, and think on them for the day. Don't worry. I will not be here next week to challenge you and ask who did it. <laughs> I won't carve out five minutes of the service for you to talk about what you thought about. So you guys are getting off the hook easy. But my final appeal and my final piece of homework, take 2 Timothy chapter 2, break it up, and just think on it a little bit each day and see how it changes your life. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. God, what a privilege it has been over the last two years to be here, to minister, to love on. And God, I ask that you would touch each and every heart and life in this place. God, that you would challenge each and every heart to be more like you. God, as we go forward, as we go into different chapters, as we go into the next thing, whatever it is that you have for us, we ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. We ask for a personal challenge for each and every one of us to live differently, to live more like you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is from us to you guys, and like I said, then we'll stay here and we'll do communion together. Dear Cliftondale Congregation, it is with both a humble heart and a grateful heart, full of sadness and excitement, Sadness to say goodbye, but excitement for the future that we write this letter. Just as Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica, we write to you. We quote, We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God the Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness, of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in the power in the Holy Spirit and full of conviction. 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 5a. We have been blessed to be a part of this church for the last two years. Through our ups and our downs, you have been supportive, kind, and generous. You have rejoiced with us when we got married, cried with us when we experienced loss, and laughed with us, or at Josh, when he shared a dad joke. You have shared meals with us, you have shared your hopes and dreams, and opened your hearts in church to us from the day we first walked in. We hold each and every one of these memories dear to our hearts. As we both move into our next chapters of our lives, while it may be separate, we would like you to know that you will continue to be in our prayers. So many of you have impacted our lives in ways you probably don't even realize. We feel so blessed to have been a part of this church these past two years. Cliftondale, you will always hold a special place in our hearts with love, Pastor Josh and Alicia.